Welcome to our lecture online. Now it turns out that our ability to try again. Okay. Welcome to our lecture online. Our ability to detect planets outside our own solar system, extrasolar planets, depends upon the effect that planets have on the host star. And so what happens is if there's a very big planet that is reasonably close to a star, the barycenter between the star and the planet actually is outside the star, and the farther outside the star it is, the easier it is to pick up the motion of that star going around the barycenter. So typically, most of the stars that we found using that technique are, of course, very, or I should say, most of the planets that we found um, during, uh, using that technique are, of course, very large planets because the larger the planet and the closer they are to the star, the easier it is to see the motion of the star because the farther the star will be from that barycenter. As an example, let's calculate the barycenter between Jupiter and the Sun to see if it's significantly far enough away that we could potentially notice the motion around the barycenter if we were an alien, for, for example, far away from our solar system looking at what our star was doing as Jupiter went around the Sun. So again, to find the center mass, we take the sum of the product of the masses of each of the object times the distance away from some central point. And typically, it would be easiest to put that point right in the center of the large object. So we put the reference point or the origin right there at the center. So that would be the distance away from that origin. And we divide that by the sum of all the masses. So in this case, we multiply the mass of the sun times zero. So we don't have to do that first calculation because that ends up being zero plus the mass of Jupiter, which is equal to 1.90 times 10 to the 27 kilograms, and then multiply times the distance from Jupiter to the Sun, and that would be equal to 778 million kilometers, so times 10 to the 6 kilometers. We divide the whole thing by the sum of the two masses. The, sun, the Sun's mass is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, and if you compare the mass of the Sun to the mass of Jupiter, you can see that the mass of the Sun is roughly a thousand times the mass of Jupiter. That's because they have about equal densities, and the volume of the Sun is roughly a thousand Jupiters, or the volume of a thousand Jupiters. So we add that to the mass of Jupiter, 1.90 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. Notice that the denominator is primarily the mass of the Sun, since the mass of Jupiter is so small in comparison, only 0.1% of the total mass of the two objects together. So let's calculate that. So we multiply that, 1.9e to the 27 times 778 million, e to the sixth, and we divide that by the sum of those two, 1.99e to the 30th plus 1.9e to the 27th equals, and notice, that that is equal to 742,000 kilometers. Now, does that place it inside the sun or outside the sun, as I indicated here? Well, it turns out that the radius of the sun is equal to about 696,000 kilometers. So you can see, since this is bigger than this, the barycenter between the Sun and Jupiter is actually outside the Sun, which means as Jupiter goes around the Sun, and it takes about a little over between almost 12 years, isn't it? So about 11.8 years or so for Jupiter to make one trip around the Sun, or essentially one trip around the barycenter, which means the Sun will wobble around the barycenter once every 11.8 years. Does that mean that the Sun moves around the barycenter quick enough so that someone, like an alien, could actually measure the Doppler shift of the light coming from the Sun? It would be blue shifted as it's moving in this direction, red shifted as going in this direction. If we see enough of that, we could essentially then say, yes, there must be a planet out there going around the Sun. Although, since Jupiter is quite far away, 778 million kilometers, which is about 5.2 astronomical units. We don't discover a lot of planets this way, the size of Jupiter, that are that far away from the star that they're, that they're orbiting around. 
So this gives you a pretty good idea of how we calculate the center mass, which then points us to the barrier center, which then allows us to understand how one object goes around the other and how actually essentially both objects actually orbit the barrier center. And that's how it's done.